Okay, we just finished a few segments on pulling an engine apart and uh, everything that's involved in the disassembly and getting one prepared to go to a uh, go to the machine shop to get cut. Um, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna work on next here is uh, show you guys how my personal way that I take a carburetor apart in order to um, take some of the guesswork out and. Uh, it makes it makes it a little easier um, in the long run. Um, this these are the carburetors from the uh, 2000 model, 60 degree, 150 horsepower uh, Johnson Evander motor that I'm building. <clears throat> this is the throttle body. These are the carburetors. These are all numbered. We numbered them in the last sequence. I showed uh, I showed you guys when we can pull them apart. You've got to number each carburetor and. Um, you need to make sure that the carburetor goes right back on the same spot it came off of. Um, I explained that uh, some motors the, the cylinder runs from straight back and some motors the, the, the cylinders cross speed through the, the intake. So you need to pay attention to that. Make sure that you uh, make sure that you understand you know which cylinders you numbered and you know even if, even if you mark it say 135 and then 246 that even though it might be not for that respective cylinder that that's where you put them back at. You just gotta you know, make sure you put them back in the right spot. Reason being is uh, once a motor begins to break in, a lot of times it requires rejetting in order to, uh, in order to make it idle right, make it get up on the plane right. And um, sometimes to, uh, you know, for your wide open throttle. Not, wide open throttle is, is not a very common rejetting that we do. It's most of the time it's idle jetting and um, an intermediate speed jetting. So, as your motor has aged and it's developed, uh, you know, different running issues, idle issues, planing issues, you've taken it to the shop or the previous owner's taken it to the shop, had one of us look at it, and um, we, uh, you know, through a whole mess of diagnostic tricks that we got, figure out what we got to do to uh, to uh, alleviate those problems and uh, and rejet these uh, carburetors. Um, so, not every one of the carburetors is going to be the same. They might be, but in most of the cases with these carbureted engines, seeing how they haven't been made for about 10 years now, and most of them are way older than that, uh, they've been rejetted in, in, bet in between, you know, there and present day. So, um, we have a special jet tool. This is a special screwdriver that uh, it's got a depth guard on it to keep you from going too deep into your jet. The, um, if you go too deep into the jet, you can damage the inner portion of it, um, and possibly a shard of metal or something could close it, close, partially close it off, which is going to uh, it's going to make it not run uh, like it was meant to be run. So I start off. A lot of times I'll take these loose on the while it's on the motor itself. This time I didn't. I'm gonna make sure you get a firm grip on these because there's a brass screw and a lot of times the screw gets damaged easily when, when you're pulling it out of there. So that's our ball drain. Once you've got that open, you wanna I've got a container over here, I'm gonna make sure that there's no fuel left in it. Okay, I previously drained these or you know drain them out through the back when I turned them on backwards. Uh, we know there's no fuel in there. Okay. <clears throat> I'll try to leave the bowl on the carburetor as much as possible. By doing that, you um, you reduce the risks of damaging your pickup tubes. There's two pickup tubes in this carburetor. One of them is a hard plastic. One of them is a, is a very soft, very thin uh, copper tubing, and it's very easily damaged. So I, I try to leave the um, bowl on there for through as much of the uh, disassembly and assembly process as possible, just because that protects those tubes, and uh, you, you don't have to think about it so much. So we're going to do a few things first before we pull that bowl off there. This is a mixing chamber on the side. This is what, um, when your fuel is picked up through your idle circuit and your intermediate circuit, the, air, the fuel and air mixture are mixed, the fuel and air are mixed in here and then distributed into the throttle body area at a specific ratio 
that um, that's determined by your jet sizing. So um, all gaskets go right in the trash. You know, reuse any of that kind of stuff. Okay, the mixing chamber is opened up. Now we're going to remove. This is an intermediate jet. These newer engines, you're, you don't have an idle jet. You have a, um, a an idle adjustment screw, and you have an intermediate jet. So we're going to remove our intermediate jet. It's always a good. Um, it's always a good practice when you pull these jets out to see what number is on them. Each one of these has a number on it. The older I get, the smaller these numbers get. <clears throat> used to be I could see them in the dark. Um, now I can't hardly see them at all. I have to break out the magnifying glasses, find out what this jet is. I'm going to write that down on a piece of paper just so I know when I put all this back together what my jet sizes are. And if I do have to make any adjustments, I've already got it written down already. I don't have to pull anything apart to know where I'm adjusting from. So, one jet out of there. Like I said, I'll have to get the microscope out and figure out what size jet that is. Pull our other jet, though. That's your intermediate jet, your high speed jet's down in here. Pull the high speed jet out. This one I might be able to read because it's a uh, number a little bit bigger on it. like it says 59B on it. I'm going to have one of the younger kids around here confirm that for me and make sure that uh, make sure that I'm reading that right. Okay. Our uh, bowl drain screw, a little rubber gasket on it. We're going to discard that guy. Now we're ready to pull the bowl off. here in the carburetor body. It's a couple different components that I mentioned earlier are your pickup tubes. This is your high speed and intermediate pickup tube. This is your idle pickup tube. This is the float and the float kind of like in a toilet has a needle valve under here just kind of like when the water raises in your toilet and it shuts the toilet off. As the fuel raises in here it shuts this valve off and closes off the fuel supply to the bowl of the carburetor. Loosen this screw a couple turns. It's a little tiny screw. It, it's you know I got big fat fingers, so hard to hard to manipulate. So I just loosen that screw a few turns, pull all this stuff out. You got a hinge pin in here that'll come out. Then you have your actual needle itself and your float. All this stuff uh, comes in the in the carburetor kit when you when you get a new kit. It is my suggestion to anyone that does this that. In order to save yourself a lot of time, put a new kit in every time you do this. Unless, per se, you just did it a week ago and now you're having problems again. Say maybe you've got debris coming through your fuel tank or something and you realize that possibly you've got some of this debris in your carburetors. You don't have to put a new kit in it at that point because you've still got a new kit. But if it's if it's the first time you're doing it or it's or it's three years later or two years later, put a new kit in it. It'll save you a lot of a lot of headache. These these pro these uh, these parts have very um, finite um, tolerances and it's hard to see with the human eye if the tolerances are within spec. So take the guesswork out, throw it all away, put new stuff in there. Got a well gasket here, they call that, they call this the well, well gasket and then your regular full gasket. Okay. <clears throat> Whoever built these carburetors last time didn't know what they were doing. The metal
double body carburetors on your uh, say uh, 40, 50, 60, 70 horsepower motors, the cross flow motors, they all get a ga they all get this little plastic washer here, this little spacer on your uh, on your seat. This is your seat. The needle goes in here, and and that's your actual valve. It seats in here. Um, the metal carburetor um, motors get this. Take this little plastic washer. A lot of people don't realize that some of them don't. The plastic body carburetors. There's one model that does take them. I'm going to double check in my manual before I reassemble this. But there's one model that does take them that I have seen. But it's it's, it's like one model out of one year over a course of 15 years of production. And I don't think this is it. So. The needle, or this needle's already in the trash. Here goes the seat, and that washer's going to go in the trash too. This little pickup tube here, you have to inspect that really well. Make sure there's no lines in it, no cracks in it. If it does crack, it will um, it will affect your idle and drive you crazy because you will never be able to get it straight because it's cracking the tube. So I always take a look at that. I take a Look at this, uh, the main pickup tube here. I don't see any deformities or any cracks and anything like that. Okay, next thing we're going to do, take a look at our bowl. These um, being made being made of plastic, you know, they do that. They do that to keep uh, keep the weight down. You know, it uh, really makes it for a much lighter motor than than a, than a competitor, and uh, and in, in that way, it's a, it's a really good design. However, if someone gets in here puts these things together and does so and uses too much force in the torquing them, it will um, it will put a concave um, section in these bolts. <clears throat> Sometimes the bodies themselves will warp. However, it's not that frequent because of the rest of the structure around this. Usually keeps this at a pretty square and level uh, and, and level position. I've seen people over torque them and warp this back side, which is more frequent than this, but less frequent than the bowl. This one looks like it's warped a little bit, but I think if we put it back on there carefully, and we'll do a little, a little, preventative, uh, little preventative measure too on this before we do, we put it back together carefully uh, that, that everything will see that right. These carburetor bowls are no longer in production, so you want to, or the, the bowls are in production. The bodies, however, are not in production anymore, and uh, so you want to be, you want to be, you want to be careful with them, and um, especially when it comes to reaffixing them to the uh, to the throttle body, make sure you don't over torque them. Over torquing them can ruin it. Don't have a real bad day then, especially when you find out how much you want. Okay.